Okay. It's 2 o'clock, and I've hit the record button, and hopefully this will all go smoothly. Great. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. Um, this is the second of three webinars on instructions and, and guidelines for submitting a successful LSTA grant application. And in case anybody new is joining us, I'm Donna Alexander. There we go. LSTA coordinator for Nevada State Library Archives and Public Records. And my contact information will appear at the end of the presentation. Today's presentation is about evaluating your library's users' needs and how to meet them. Here's today's agenda. We'll do a quick review of the information from the first webinar last week and then move into evaluation content, look at outcome-based evaluations, the four steps that define the evaluation, and field questions along the way. I've got the chat box open so that, I'll, you know, I'll check it every couple of minutes and answer your questions. I'll read the questions back to, so everybody can hear them and hopefully be able to provide an immediate answer. LSTA is a federal grants program for states' libraries, funded annually by Congress and the Office of Management and Budget. The Institute for Museum and Library Services our friends at IMLS, manages the LSTA program and allocates the grant money to each state based on the state's population. Then each state library, like us, communicates to all of the eligible libraries who then decide if they want to apply for grant money, and the process begins. Note the timeline, right about here. Your application is due here in library development by 5 p.m. on Monday, November 21st. Now, you can email a copy in as a placeholder, but the hard copy original PDF fillable form, signed in blue ink by the project manager and the library director, please, must be postmarked by November 21st. This gives you a chance to digest the webinar information and become familiar with the LSTA Grants Management Manual that's on our website. Last week's webinar is already archived on our website. And the third and final webinar is next Thursday, the 20th. So let's do a quick review of the information from last week. Um, on the, we'll start with the information on the first page of the, of the application. General info. We need your DUNS number, basically your business license number. We need the library information, your street address and phone, and your website if you have one. Um, contact information and email addresses. There may be more than one contact person, and that's okay. It's the project manager and the library director we're after, and sometimes that may be one and the same person. We need the amount of money you're requesting for your project and the number of people you expect will benefit from your tar target audience. Okay. Here's part one of the application components. The abstract, the need or opportunity, the target audience, the benefits to the target audience, the LSTA goal and planning documents, which we'll read and get to later, implementation, evaluation, budget and budget narrative, and a timeline for achieving the, the objectives and the goal. With the budget and the budget narrative, um, you're going to be asked to specify exactly where the money is going to go, how it's, how it's going to be spent on advertising, promotional materials, Will you be using a consultant or paying a staff member to work on program development and performing activities that relate to your objectives and the grant? Each box or each field for the narrative and project descriptions has little definitions of what information goes into that box, so you're guided throughout the process. You also have the grants manual and us to call if you get stuck or if you have any questions. More. Components, project summary, how your grant application ties to LSDA plans for Nevada goals, what's the project intent, who's your primary audience, are you partnering, partnering with anyone, any other groups, and what's the project need. In terms of partnerships, in your application packet you'll be sending, please, please include any and all letters of collaboration or support. Um, it's best for us to have all the documents in one submission, not in bits and pieces. Please. 
see the last component on this page, here's where you tie exactly your project need to your planning documents and your st strategic plan. So our review board can see how you're mapping the project to long-term vision and goals, be they local or statewide, and how all this maps to the IMLS. Hey, we got music. <laughs> Uh, Natalie writes in, I thought the due date was extended to December 1st. Um, that made it too small a window for us to get everything reviewed and get it to the review board. So we're, we're sticking with the 21st of November. Somebody's got their music playing. Uh-oh. <laughs> Can you still... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Let me... Somebody has music playing, so can you check your settings, please? Is, did somebody mute? <laughs> well, if it's on mute, they'll never know. Carrie, can you hear me? Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, yes, I can. I Hey, Hope. And <laughs> well, you know, hurt my feelings. <laughs> okay. You're right. Well, this makes life interesting. <laughs> well, can you hear me well enough to talk through it? Okay. Um, I'll... Oh. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay, we're back in business. <laughs> we won't bust anybody. Okay, moving on with the application components. Um, we've done partnerships. Project activities and descriptions. Evaluation includes the project outputs, budget category, and a timeline. Um, across the board, the evaluation part is sort of the, the biggest challenge, but it's about coming up with one quality-based outcome, which is an IML, IMLS expectation. And we'll get into outputs and outcomes in a minute. But for the moment, does anybody have any further questions? I'll give us a minute to see if anybody wants to type in or if they want to speak to me. Okay. All right. Nobody's got questions, then we'll keep tracking. Keep tracking. Okay. Let's look at what the expectations are for developing the evaluations. Okay. Project outputs. They're measures of services and or products to be created or provided. Project outcomes describe the measurable outcomes. So for outputs, it's basic data that ref reflects a service being created, maybe through the number of circulations, traffic, database sessions. Um, outcomes, however, need to be a little bit more measurable. They're, they're qualitative, not quantitative, which sounds contradictory, but outcomes identify changes in knowledge, skills, abilities, and a little bit later we'll look at methods of measuring outcomes. Outcome-based evaluations. The moral of that story is that we want to be sure that all public dollars are spent well because a lot of 
the money that you raise for your grant project comes from tax base. So this is this is more of an informative slide. Um, there are two met methods here. Uh, actually, one's a piece of legislation, the Government Performance and Results Act, and the other, the United Way, is an agency that partners with community organizations to ensure that the money is being spent well and meets the intended need for the targeted audience. And of course, the public wants to know where the money goes, where the tax money goes, so that addresses the transparency aspect. Um, two examples of United Way involvement with LSTA grants. The first was an initiative to improve early literacy for our Utah neighbors. Um, United Way joined with community organizations in 2014 and got a state bill passed to fund preschool for low-income students through private investments. This added 750 new seats for four-year-olds in public and private schools. So the law paved the way for a pay-for-success model for early education. Um, private investors make a loan to demonstrate proven, pro proven programs and the state pays them back only after the program demonstrates positive results. It's similar to our reimbursement process, but ours is, is, isn't based totally on the success or lack of success of your program. But you do have to raise matching funds and expend them in order to be reimbursed by LSTA. The other United Way example I, I pulled out was Brownsville, Texas Public Library System received $75,000 from LSTA. And in collaboration with United Way, um, they were able to, to provide literacy, education, and job training classes to library users. So that was good. Outcome-based evaluations. Since the project is designed to serve a particular need or group of people, how do we achieve framing the evaluation? How is the project going to make a difference for the end users? Because it's about and user focused services. So we achieve it through developing effective programming and designing realistic objectives for the targeted audience being served. What's the point of outcome based evaluations? Outcomes are directly linked to the needs of the users and to the identified need. It demonstrates that the project or the program has made a difference in the community or to the target audience. And you know, it demonstrates that the project is worthy of funding because it addresses or it has an impact on the library users. So again, we keep in mind that it's all about improving user skills. Okay, the four steps that define a successful project outcome are forming the evaluation, defining goals and objectives, data collection, and finally, writing it all up. First, we have to identify the need. How do you know there's a need? Um, how do you document context? How does, how does it fit with the LSTA goals or your library's goals? What are the available resources and what might already exist? And what's your strategy for accomplishing the objectives? Okay. First, ad identifying the need. Document context and forming your evaluation. What's the need for the money? For example, we need to buy more books. Why? That's the question to be answered. The stronger case is we need to buy more items because we don't have enough resources, say, on a specific subject that we recognize has become a hot topic discussion in our community. So what are the available resources and what are your program strategies? How do you plan on implementing the project? Look again at your planning documents and define which of the four LSTA goals the project, the project will meet. And do you have anything already in place for, for uh, funding sources besides LSTA? Let me just blow through the goals real quick. Um, will this grant or will this goal strengthen your li library's ability to effectively respond to community needs through assessment, planning, and training? Will your strategy provide responsive learning environments for Nevada residents? Will it encourage Nevada libraries to develop and use partnerships and collaboration to maximize user resources and services throughout the state? And 
finally, goal number four, will this program build the capacity of libraries to meet user-identified access needs? Okay. okay, again, document the context so it fits the planning documents, which is what the review board is looking for. Okay, here's an example of a, of a reason for funding. The need is for improving senior online literacy because not every older adult has access or knows how to use the internet, but wants to learn how to find current, relevant, say, information on a healthcare topic or how to get financial assistance. Now, last week, remember, we talked about de demographic sites. Um, U.S. Census Bureau, the State Data Center here at the State Library that Diane Lightwood manages and works closely with Jeff Hardcastle at nvdemography.org in Reno. Use the demographic sources along with observation to find out who makes up your community or user base, which helps identify the need. Talk to your staff and get to know the community and the users coming through the door. What program activities are you going to offer? Classes? Collection development enhancements so your users or patrons get current, up-to-date, evidence-based information on how to use the web and how to find info that's relevant to their needs. Because remember, the intent of the project is to serve the users. So we're developing programs that are end-user focused. Step two, writing goals and objectives. It takes practice, but it's about what you do, what, you know, what do you want this project to achieve. Objectives are the steps you're going to take to make the project fly. So we've got goals and benefits to the target audience, objectives and activities that are going to improve their skill level, um, and what's the big picture? What will the project achieve for the end user? What are the specific actions linked to the goal to help the end user succeed? More goals and objectives. <laughs> Using the, the senior literacy example, um, the goal again is enhanced web literacy among seniors in, of the community. And we're going to do it by providing informational classes, one-on-one -on -one training, expanded collection um, resources, and maybe connecting with program partners or you know, addressing that as part of the collaboration in aspect. Outcomes. What's the impact on the end user? We, uh, we want to see a positive change in behavior, attitude, skills, knowledge, condition or status. Again, a user-centered approach to the assessment of programs and services that have been de designed to achieve a change for the user. If you can articulate and document that in the application, that shows, again, the review board and the funding authority how well organized you are in delivering a, a su successful project. Okay, Outcomes. Pick one outcome. Just one, because you only have a year to implement, implement and evaluate the program. Okay? Make sure that the expectation or expected outcome is doable in that time frame. Make it measurable, again, and identify the goals and the methods, objectives, you're going to use to make a positive impact on your tar target audience. This slide, again, reinforces that it's all about the users, patron-focused. Um, uh, as you describe or do the narrative, you know, begin the sentence with the target group. Um, it, it, because, again, it's about identifying the target group and how you are going to help them succeed. Uh, it's patron-focused. You want to use the, the target group in the first sentence. You know, seniors in our community need improved searching skills. What we want to do is provide outcomes that are action-based. So you, the verbs on the screen, know, understand, increase, improve, decrease, <laughs> sometimes, reduce, expand. Okay. Um, you know, do collect the data, but again, 
be sure it fits in with your goal. Because we're asking a lot of questions about how to frame the outcome. So let's go back to the example of helping seniors achieve internet literacy. Okay. Again, begin the sentence with the target group. That's the most important thing. Okay. And identify the action verbs. The overall outcome that you've identified, again, it starts with the target audience. Seniors of the community will gain web skills to access the internet with ease. And again, pick one manageable outcome. Okay. And what's your plan for achieving the outcome? Okay. Are you going to develop classes and workshops designed to teach skills to seniors? And you know, the outcome is seniors who take the workshop will learn basic internet navigation skills and be a little bit more self-driven. Data collection plan. What's your plan to capture the information or the justification for asking for the grant money? Um, you know, design the plan, make the methods practical. We're going to de de sorry devise a schedule. And what's our target for change? Is it realistic? Um, what's the need? Are you already collecting the data? Okay, devise, what we want to do is devise a schedule or timetable for monitoring where you are with your objectives. Remember, the outcome needs to be time and event based. So again, what might you already have in place? You need to engage the user and get their input. You know, ask your users what their needs are so you can plan cl classes, for example, to meet their need. Getting that input and their buy-in are voluntary points, and just keep in mind that confidentiality is key. You know, again, it's it's my healthcare analogy from last week. Um, you know, I use the phrase patient-centered care, so we know this in this arena it's end-user-centered care or patron-centered care. But just like the Privacy Act in healthcare, we want to keep the users' identities anonymous. Our focus is, is on designing plans to serve an audience, but the evaluation doesn't care about their names. That's what We don't need to share that. That's not what we're after. What we are after is measuring how positive the results of the project are. Okay, what might you already have in place um, to capture usage stats? Is, if capturing stats or usage statistics is important to your success. Integrated library systems, number of items circulated or checked out, number of library cards created, reference statistics. If you're using the statewide databases or any other online tools that gather usage stats, um, tally the number of hits on your library's website as well. Database vendors like EBSCO have methods for stat collection or can give you administrative access for tracking so you can find out how many hits or how many sessions there were that month or over the course of the project, project um, you know, and decide how often you're going to collect these stats and see what the learning curve looks like. Surveys. Lots of us use SurveyMonkey, which is fine. You know, it's self-administered, so your participants can choose when they're comfortable taking the survey. And by now, after a couple of classes, a couple of sessions, if, if it, you are using SurveyMonkey, they should be able to log on with minimal assistance, but be prepared to help them get started if the need arises. Okay. Keep the survey language neutral because we don't want to influence their answers, so develop open-ended questions because they work best. Design the survey tools so that the results are easy to analyze on your end. And always, always do a walkthrough, a pilot test, so you know that the survey system works. It's kind of like us testing our equipment today to be sure we can get into the webinars. Music and all. <laughs> okay, interview. Answers are going to be from the, the user's perspective. You may have some predefined questions, and you may have a conversation with the end user about clarifications. Um, Allow room and time for follow-ups. Anecdotes are not only possible, but they're highly likely. Um, it's labor-intensive, depending on the number of participants you have and staff ded dedicated to the data collection. 
and it's a conversation. So you may find that as you're asking questions and the follow-up questions, uh, don't be surprised if they start telling stories about how they felt about the training or the classes, what they came across as their, as their skills got better. They may want to tell you stories about how they felt about their new skills, which of course impacts the value of the tools that they were given for learning. So design the tools so they'll want to come back for more. That return on investment validates the time and effort you put into making objectives like developing and teaching the classes work. Self-report and observation. Hmm. It's best for objective items, but will the participants respond? Yeah, because they're going to come back and tell you stories about what they learned and, and, and how impressed they are with their new set of skills and, and how you developed um, classes or activities focused on them. Um, observation, it's, effect, it's absolutely effective. Um, you may have to train your staff to learn what to look for or what to ask the, the users, but they can watch and see how well the participants are learning to search the web and they can identify changes in knowledge or behavior. And it could be how many times does, does a user come up to the reference desk and say, hey, can you help me? And then you go over to the computer and help them navigate, and that takes them one step further up the learning curve. Tests are also good for measuring changes in skills, like in a class or a workshop setting. So you can do a pretest and a post-test to assess skill level level improvement. Target for change. Your standards for success. Numerical? Reasonable? Is there a baseline available like the pretest and post-test? No, are they realistic? Um, you know, how would you like to, how do you intend to see these changes occur? Here's some more methods for measuring outcome evaluation. Complete a searching exercise. Again, anecdotes, you know, them, them telling stories about what they found and, and, and how successful they're feeling. Um, develop a workshop or classes. And so kind of like, you know, we're doing three webinars here um, so that you have a beginner's point, you know, beginning level point for them, a midway check-in, and a final class that measures their success and how far they've come. How many were actually able to complete a searching exercise? And did you have enough participants succeed to meet your goal? Because on this slide it says 75% you know, of, of participants will be able to activate a search engine and be successful. And so that's the outcome. Did you meet the outcome? Okay. We've identified the goal. Enhance web literacy among seniors in, in the community. And this is how we're going to do it informational classes, one-on-one -on -one training, an expansion of resources, and collaboration. Um, one of the um, grants from last year was held at a library, but it partnered with one of the local community colleges and um, go government agencies and actually had experts on in certain fields come in and teach um, the skills that were needed to, you know, for the users to achieve and, and be successful. So they brought in um, engineers and teachers and healthcare experts, and, and you know. so you know, use use the resources around you in your community to bring in experts that might be able to help teach the classes. I forgot something. Sorry. Um, identifying the outcome is critical. Did we really reach enough of the target audience? Did we advertise and promote our grant program in the right places like community centers, grocery store bulletin boards, or information boards in apartment complexes? Um, also, you know, a lot of seniors listen to the radio, so public service announcements on the radio are often free. And so, you know, how can we reach the most of our top target audience and be sure that we captured as many people as we could who needed you know to improve their skills 
and help us succeed in the community as well. Step four, writing it up. Okay, evaluation and education start at the beginning because this shows you're demonstrating a high level of project management skill. You know, with the implementation, did we meet the timeline? Uh, did we stay on track? Did we communicate with staff and the end users to let them know, you know where the project was and how success successful it was moving along? Um, did you assign responsibility across staff so that all the right people were involved? And did we meet the needs of the target population? This is a checklist um, for the app, you know, results that you expect, data collection methods, data that will be collected, what records will be kept, who's responsible for what components of this project, and when will the evaluation take place. Don't be wordy, but show how you intend to make this a success for your users. Do document the expected results because this checklist becomes your roadmap and again a timeline for who on your staff is doing what tasks, when they're due, throughout the implementation year of the project, and this checklist will help you stay on track. <laughs> Besides, you've got deliverables to my team at regular inter intervals like reimbursement requests uh, and quarterly reports. Um, we'll get to that calendar and when all that stuff is due at the next webinar next Thursday and we'll also put it up on the website um, so that you know when, what the intervals are and they'll be in the grant manual as well. Uh, 36. Okay, evaluate the whole project. Use outputs. What did you create? What services did you provide? Uh, what activities? and products did you share with the users to help them succeed? Choose one outcome and be realistic. Okay? If you hit roadblocks with implementation, just give me or my team a call and we'll walk you through it. Um, either how to adjust the, the outputs um, or adjust the objectives so we can figure out how to keep you on track but still make it a successful process for you. For the final report, writing it up, interpreting the data. Okay, look, yeah, look for patterns. Remember the project goal. You know, we're here to serve and get our users to a su successful conclusion. Um, in interpreting the data, you know whether or not you met your expectations, tie it into your goal. And you know, unintended consequences happen, but stay on task as best you can. Yeah. Uh, stuff happens and it doesn't always go as planned but document any obstacles or any roadblocks any, anything you came across that's hindering your progress and again if you get stuck give me or, or any you know my team a call, uh, a call hey look at this it's a wrap so here's what we covered today a review and an overview from last week's webinar um, went through the evaluation section, you know, what's, what's, um, what's critical, what's needed, what does the review board expect, defining uh, outcome-based evaluations, and the four steps for writing a su successful application, okay, forming the evaluation, defining the goals and objectives, the data collection plan, and the basic summary. Um, keep it in simple language on target and to the point, just say what you need to get across to the review board because they're the ones who advise the library administrator what projects are, should move forward. And as we review your applications, if there are any questions or we need clarification um, going through your submission, we'll get back to you and give you the timeline for when you need to respond to us so that you know, we, we all can move forward. Okay, so once more, the application needs to be emailed to me by 5 p.m. on November 21st 
and then get the hard copy signed in blue in the mail postmarked on or before the 21st. Natalie submitted a question, will we receive copies of the PowerPoints from the webinars? The answer is they're going to be posted on our website, nsla.nv.gov. Um, and hang on, watch this. There's the website. So as the first webinar is already posted, this one will be too, and this whole slideshow will be there. And then so will the third on implementation and budget. Um, and that one will come right after um, NLA, the Library Association meeting down in Vegas. So that will give everybody time to digest the information on the webinar and get with your staff and devise a plan. Okay. And this program was brought to you by IMLS, <laughs> who supports and manages the LSTA program. And we look forward to receiving your applications. We'll get with you and give you the timetable for when um, they're going to the review board, when, if, you, if we have any questions, when we'll get back to you and how much time you have to answer the questions before we approve it and move forward. So we look forward to getting your applications as soon as possible because we've got 20, including the state proposals, we've got 28 um, interested parties, you know, this year. So, um, yeah, get, get, give them to me as quickly as you can. And, again, if you have any questions, come back through the slideshow, go to the grants manual, or just give me a call or drop me an email, and we'll be glad to help you because we want your users to succeed, but we sure want you to succeed because that helps the community and makes you look stronger as well. So are there any other questions? You're very welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Yeah, um, my clock says 2.37, so I'm going to wait until 2.39, and then I'll log off. But, yeah, if you have any questions, yeah, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Christina. Thanks, Jeannie. Corey, you could hear me. Thanks. Hey, Forrest. Thank you, too. So, yeah, we had 17 participants today, so that was terrific. Thanks, Amy. Bye, Hope. <laughs> and if anybody's left, yeah, don't forget. You can always just drop me an email or give me a call. Um, throughout the process. So we look forward to helping you succeed as well. Okay. It's a wrap. I'm going to close the program and I look forward to getting your applications as soon as you can get them together and get them to us. Bye for now. <laughs>